so today we are here with uh, the owner of Scooties. And can you please introduce yourself? Yeah. So first of all, welcome to Scooties Corporation. My name is Henry. I'm the founder and uh, owner of Scooties Corporation, also the director. Mm. And um, I'm originally from Germany. I'm 35 years old. I'm living since five years in Bali. Before that, I lived for a few years in Singapore. And my actual background before I became an entrepreneur was military. So I'm a former military officer mm -hmm. from the German army and also law. So I studied law for almost 12 years. No. Oh, yeah, mainly amazing. German law, Singaporean law, mm -hmm. and also international business law. But now I'm fully focused on business. On business. Yeah. Okay. So can you tell us a bit about uh, Scutis and uh, how did you make it and why did you make it? Sure. So, when I was living in Singapore, I moved there in August 2015, e-scooters were extremely popular there. They were used pretty much everywhere. And for me, it was the first time seeing e-scooters. And when mm -hmm. I moved there, I needed some vehicle to get around, to get mm -hmm. to campus, mm -hmm. to do my groceries, mm -hmm. for sightseeing, of yeah. course, yeah. right? And compared to motorbikes and cars, e-scooters were significantly cheaper there. And that's when there were no regulations. You were allowed to use them wherever you wanted. Mm. So my very first week, I bought a little e-scooter, a bit small, our own e-scooters actually, in Singapore. And I used it to go everywhere. I, I parked it literally in, in the lecture hall. Mm -hmm. I, I parked it in my, in my bedroom for mm. charging. Yeah. Um, I brought it for clubbing. And then I was like, Clubbing? Yes. <laughs> That's so cool. That's, that's, that's so cool. If, if you're drunk or lazy, yeah. you just fold it and you put it in the trunk of the mm -hmm. taxi and you go mm -hmm. home with it so you don't have right. to leave it behind. Right. But right. you, you save uh, the hustle to call a taxi mm -hmm. or ask a friend mm -hmm. or drive by yourself on the way to the club. Mm -hmm. And if you're not drunk, it's even better. You can mm -hmm. also ride it back. Right. You yeah. don't pay a parking fee. You can park wherever you want. So you yeah. even at the entrance of the club. Mm -hmm. It's always mm -hmm. feel like VIP. Mm -hmm. And for me, it was pure freedom. Right? So like that's actually really nice. Why is there no one providing this with us? In Indonesia and that time I already had lots of friends in Bali so I used to travel to Indonesia since I was 21 almost mm -hmm. every year I asked my friends hey, what do you think about that do you think it would work in Bali with the tourists and so on there's mm -hmm. smaller roads here mm -hmm. traffic is a bit slower than mm -hmm. Jakarta I'm oh, sorry than in, also in Jakarta but also than in Singapore yeah and um, they said like yeah sure let's let's try it you know and then while I was still studying in Singapore in 2016 I imported actually from China mm -hmm. some different type of e-scooters to Bali just to make a public trial event you know ask the public for their opinion ask mm -hmm. my friends for their mm -hmm. opinion mm -hmm. then we tried the e-scooters here on the, the major roads even and also in Jakarta on the big roads yeah. like, wow it works even better than expected yeah. you know yeah. you suddenly get so easy through a traffic jam you can charge them everywhere mm -hmm. um, if you're convenient and mm -hmm. fun, I said, okay, let's do it. So I created my own company in 2016. 2016, in yeah. And opened in uh, 2017, the beginning of 2017, my first shop here in Bali. Mm -hmm. At that time, we were in Thibaut Benet, next mm -hmm. to Starbucks, the most popular yeah. conference recreation club. Mm -hmm. And the idea was at that time only to have one shop, resell e scooter brands mm -hmm. from other factories and so mm -hmm. on, of course, maintain them, and that's it. You know, I just wanted mm -hmm. to make some people as happy as I always was my e-scooter mm -hmm. and have my own little of course profitable yeah. business. That was the original yeah. idea. Okay. Yeah. But then I realized that e-scooters are so new in Indonesia, the market is so big mm -hmm. that you cannot um, create a market for e-scooters with a little budget or, or with, with um, a small company, mm -hmm. right? To to actually create a market for a completely new type of vehicle that you want to use safely on the main roads, yeah. you need much more. You yeah. need a huge network, you need a, a tremendous, tremendous amount of capital, in my right, opinion. Right. Uh, you need much time, yeah. uh, you have to help with new regulations maybe, mm. or at least uh, push the mm. government to help with new regulations, and so on, so on. So after a few years, I, I noticed that the business will not work if I don't make it bigger and if I don't find a way to make it more affordable. Mm -hmm. Okay, so over the years, especially during the pandemic, um, me, my, my Canadian business partner, Jason, and some of my friends, yeah. Um, we developed a business model that will solve those problems, which will solve the problem of lack of brand awareness, mm -hmm. of product knowledge, mm -hmm. and the problem of um, affordability. So the new business that we want to launch next month, actually, next is month. called Scooty. Mm -hmm. And that will be a large scale and very scalable business, mm -hmm. which will provide roadworthy e-scooters like those here behind, okay. with GPS. 
so you can GPS. Recommend. Yes, we oh, can okay. rent a scooter application. Okay. Right? Maybe you heard about you guys heard maybe about e scooters being rented to an application, especially in Western countries or even yeah. Indonesia, like Grab Wheels. Yeah, that's true. Right? Yeah, yeah. But all those scooters they're not designed for the main roads. They are all designed as a so-called first or last mile solution mm. to ride on the pedestrian walk, right. bicycle lane, right. next bus stop, and that's it. They're not which, made for the roads. Yeah, which is actually not safe. Which is not safe. Yeah, yeah exactly. Because they're not made for the roads, mm -hmm. simply, mm -hmm. right? They True. Not enough speed, no mm -hmm. direction indicators, mm -hmm. maybe the lighting is not good enough, mm -hmm. or maybe the tire is too small, and so on and so on. But of course, it's different if you have actually a bigger e scooter that is made for the roads. Yeah. Because it's made for the roads, yeah. it's also safe there, logically, right? Right. So that's yeah. what we are specializing on. That's what we want to push very much uh, as of next month. Mm -hmm. So um, we will have our own, or we have actually our own e scooter for that, but we are currently redesigning it. Mm -hmm. And we'll be registered in Jakarta as an yeah. industrial design. And then we will start in July, probably, with mm -hmm. 250 units in Bali as a pilot project. And those units, they will be placed mainly at hotels, five-star resorts, four-star resorts, mm. business tourist spaces, mm. and so on. But partly, they will also support the public transportation system that we have in Denpasar with the yeah. bus system. Yeah. So we still will live with you, uh, same thing like other e-scooter companies, we still provide the first and last mile solution. But the innovation here is that our scooters can also be used as a mid-range vehicle, or mid-range means of transportation. Mm -hmm. So you could go, for example, all the way from Jimbaran mm -hmm. to Shangu and then okay. from Shangu back to Jimbaran. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't do that with a smaller e scooter simply because the speed and the battery endurance is not there. Yeah. So you do, it uses battery, right? Yes. So we just need to charge it. Yes. Oh, so right. I should okay. explain a little bit about that too and also about branding because it's interesting yeah. for other yeah. as well. Yeah, it is very <laughs> interesting. <laughs> First of all, mm -hmm. Scooty is our new company in brand, S K U T I. Yeah. Right? Scooty is completely made up by me. It's not part of the language. Mm -hmm. However, Scootis, in the name of my current company, Scootis Corporation, mm -hmm. is actually part of the Indonesian language. Scootis is an abbreviation for Scooter Electris. Ah, which means okay. electric scooter. Electric scooter, yeah. Right. Yeah. So it means there are also other companies, smaller ones, who also use Scootis somehow in the name, mm -hmm. like Bali Scootis Adventure mm -hmm. and so on. Because it's not a brand or a name. Our name is not Scooties. Yeah. Our current name yeah. is Scooties Corporation. Yeah. Like motorbike corporation, car corporation, mm -hmm. whatever, right? Mm -hmm. But now we want to be able to brand the name. So we just strike the S away. Just make a nice logo, mm -hmm. and boom, you have something innovative which you can register as a brand. What is your logo like now? This, this. one? Yeah. Oh, okay. So you're going to rebranding all of this? Yes. Okay. Exactly. Like so the color? Be because the color is very. Particular, so when we spot it, it's like, oh, it's good. Yes, for now, <laughs> but the color will be even more particular. Mm. Okay, yeah, we will okay. be inspired by the Tron movie, you know, the Tron movie with the neon lights, oh, and space, yeah, 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 and so yeah, on. yeah, yeah. So, we're gonna use black with mm -hmm. neon to pass for our new logo. Mm. It's actually like this one, this one yeah. oh, like this. right, yeah, a bit more bright and neon, but the colors are roughly like that, yeah, yeah, oh, and very cool. so. And uh, so, uh, your company has been here for at least four years mm -hmm. now, four yeah. years. So, how has it been, the business in Bali for mm -hmm. Scooty? So, selling honestly in Indonesia in general, not just for us, has mm -hmm. been always slow. Mm -hmm. Okay, we believe the first reason is that if you want to actually buy or use an e-scooter that is really working well, we bring, bring you everywhere in, in Bali, then you have to spend the same amount of money as for a motorbike. Mm, Let's say yeah. 17 million. Yeah. All right? But it is really hard to educate people about the benefits of the e scooter that looks so much smaller than a motorbike. So mm, it's yeah. hard to convince an average citizen here to, to buy an e scooter instead of a motorbike. To be honest, because mm. people don't care too much about the environment, about all those benefits. They care mainly about money and conditions. Right, right? right. And the convenience aspect is maybe there for the e scooter, but you might not understand it. You haven't tried it. Mm -hmm. You haven't tried to get through a traffic jam yeah. with both motorbike and e-scooter. If you don't have this comparison, it's a bit hard to understand yeah, that. Yeah, you know? right. right. Um, the other problem is, as I said earlier, lack of education. I mean, people simply don't know that we mm -hmm. exist. Yeah, true. <laughs> that e-scooters for main yeah. roads exist. Yeah. Maybe some people know now we have smaller e-scooters. Mm -hmm. and know it's fun. But they wouldn't think about using that to, to go on the sunset road. Right, right. Unless right. Yeah. they saw someone doing it or trying it by themselves. Yeah. yeah. 
So yeah, um, selling was really slow, but rental business um, was before the pandemic pretty good. We also had a tour business for mm-hmm. international tourists. People like to rent it for the weekend, for a day, uh, sometimes with a guide, sometimes with a guide. And because of the pandemic, we had to close the tour business. But now we recently launched new mini tours mm-hmm. at the Botanic Garden. Bar, but do go. And yeah. also in Bobo, mm-hmm. right, where the presence kind of yeah, yeah. That runs very well. There we have about 75 and about 100 guests a day mm-hmm. for our users. That's given the current pandemic and everything and lack of commercial tours, which is really good. So, so it's a partnership and part of yes. your marketing. Yes. Okay. So uh, you also sell all these scooters? Yeah. And what is the price range for the scooters? Okay, so in Indonesia we have a community, it's called Community Scooter Electricity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And this community created a code of conduct also together with me. And based on this code of conduct, we have basically three different types of categories for e-scooters. Mm-hmm. It's uh, toy e-scooters, light e-scooters, and heavy e-scooters. Okay, and then the light and heavy e-scooters, they are sometimes also roadworthy if they fulfill certain other requirements, like mm-hmm. so minimum speed, direction mm-hmm. indicators, and so yeah. on. Mm-hmm. Now a toy e-scooter, which can actually also be used by adults to drive on a few kilometers to the bus stop, costs only, I would say, between uh, 1.5 to 3 million rupiah. 1.5 to 3 million? Yes. Oh, so it's actually very affordable. For the toy e-scooters. Okay, right? Oh, okay, right, right. If you, if you look at the light e-scooters, that mm. uh, are most of the time light enough to get transported in a bus or in an MRT, uh, if they're designed for adults, if they have a speed of let's say at least 25 kilometers per hour, mm-hmm. then the price range is rather 4 to 15 million. You said at least, at least 25. At least and how fast can it get? Well, if you look at the heavy category, then there's almost no limit. So wow! The, wow! The, the, the scooters that we're going to equip the GPS for the new business. They will reach, like most of us do this year, 50 km per hour. Mm-hmm. So it's just fast enough to cope with the traffic in the city. But it's not too fast, so you cannot do speeding. Okay. Because most of uh, yeah. fatal motorbike accidents yeah. happen because of speeding and because people are not wearing a helmet. Right. So we don't right. make our scooters too fast. But we mm-hmm. have to make them fast enough to be, you know, to cope with the traffic in the city. So mm-hmm. we try to strike a balance there between, yeah. between safety and practicality tractability and speed mm. and uh, we, have, we also have an automatic helmet box yeah. on the rear of our new e-scooter and uh, we will make sure that our customers have to wear this helmet. Okay. We will also check that we will have so-called scooty rangers mm-hmm. patrolling around mm-hmm. the rental stations mm-hmm. which we call mobility stations by the way and then uh, those rangers will be like some kind of police mm-hmm. making sure the customers follow our terms and conditions yeah. Yeah. but there will also be customer service they will also okay. give the customers okay. advice we'll tell them which way they should take mm-hmm. or how they should stand the mm-hmm. scooter and so on mm-hmm. um, but to fully answer your question we also have a racing team so we okay. are actually managing Indonesia's national e-scooter racing team and currently oh. preparing for the World Championship qualifications mm-hmm. in Europe so I might need to fly to Europe in two weeks. It's still in two in the weeks, process, yeah, yeah, for the qualification event. Very exciting. Mm-hmm. And the scooters that we are using in Europe for racing, they can reach a hundred kilometers per hour in less than three seconds. Less than three seconds. A yes. hundred kilometers per yes. hour. Standing position. Oh wow! As we'll see, you stand on them. Wow! So how the safety looks like on the bu- on the scooter? I mean. I mean, if you have an e-scooter like this one here, mm-hmm. it only reaches 50 km per hour only. <laughs> only? <laughs> yeah. Then it's very nice enough to wear a proper half-face helmet. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, can, I can show you one in a moment. Yeah, that's sure. right. Um, but if you ride like one that is faster than that, what we usually call heavy e-scooter, mm-hmm. then you should have a full-face helmet, just like for a motorbike. Because it's similar speed, mm-hmm. similar acceleration, so yeah. I believe it should just be yeah. the same safety gear. But if you start racing, or let's say if you go faster than 80 km per hour, mm-hmm. you should have, well, the same again, that someone would wear on a racing motorbike or mm-hmm. on a big motorbike. Mm-hmm. So you would maybe wear a leather jacket yeah. or, or yeah. proper boots, you know. Mm-hmm. Or if you race and you wear actually a complete wear pack, like a like mm-hmm. MotoGP ride. Mm-hmm. That's what mm-hmm. our races are very mm-hmm. racing. And I also noticed mm-hmm. that uh, all your racers are women. Yes, that's correct. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. So why is that? Okay, so it's for different reasons. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, from a marketing perspective, it is simply because most professional racers in the world, 
like if you look at F1, uh, MotoGP, A1, mm -hmm. all male. Mm -hmm. it's, it has almost never been happened that any female racer made to the top racing level, right? right. But now, oh. because e-scooter racing is a complete new motorsport, mm -hmm. there's a very first world championship happening this year. Uh, women have a real chance to be from the beginning on on the same level like men. So uh, we want to give women in general, not just Indonesian women, mm -hmm. an opportunity mm -hmm. to prove that they can race at least as good as mm -hmm. men. That's a really good opportunity because mm -hmm. everyone starts at the same level. Yeah. Everyone is a beginner of the sport. Yeah. But um, you know, Asian women coming to the Western world to compete against people from all over the world, mm -hmm. it's just very interesting for yeah. women, right? because yeah. it's unique. That's one reason. But the second reason is that um, we believe if you have a light slim body, by doing this for the racing, mm -hmm. you have a little advantage. Okay. Right? Because you have less wind stopping you. Right. Um, you can accelerate faster and so on. But unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, to, to be fair, mm -hmm. um, the World Championship, called the Eastwater Championship, by the way, has a special software mm -hmm. which considers the weight and, and body position of each rider. So that means if I'm riding those e-scooters, mm -hmm. I will get less power, mm -hmm. no, sorry, more power, compared to someone who's lighter. Because if you're light, they don't need that much power. Oh, okay. So I can reduce okay. the power through an algorithm, mm -hmm. uh, through the software, controller, and electric motor. So that's not really a benefit anymore, but mm. it, it can still be a benefit if we can participate in less big and less professional, maybe e-scooter championships. We also mm. want to make our own championship in mm -hmm. Indonesia, so then it could still be an advantage. If you're lighter, slimmer, mm -hmm. you should have a little advantage compared to right. big races. Right. What else? Um, so, uh, yeah. so far, how do you market the business? How do you market Scooty so far and how's it been? So we based on our experience, because it's a new product, mm -hmm. the best way of marketing is being out there, let people try, and bring as many people as possible on the roads with mm -hmm. those scooters. Mm -hmm. um, once again, that's why we want to go big now as a new company. We want to put them in all the hot spots, mm -hmm. and we want to um, provide them for very affordable prices mm -hmm. when we'll come in it, so that you get like an automatic marketing effect just by being visible with our brand everywhere. Yes. Other bars, yeah. Other hotspots, right? yeah. Um, but for now, what we did a lot was using influencers. Mm -hmm. So that worked uh, sometimes good, sometimes not so good. I think it depends on what kind of influencers and right. what kind of content mm -hmm. they, they do. Um, we try quite a lot of paid campaigns, mm -hmm. like social media campaigns mm -hmm. on YouTube, Google, mainly Instagram, mm -hmm. Facebook. And that was usually good to get some leads or some inquiries, maybe some more followers. Mm -hmm. But it very, very rarely led to any sales, to be honest. Again, because the people cannot imagine how big the e-scooters actually are, how fast they are, mm -hmm. how they feel. Mm -hmm. And it's a bit difficult to get them, especially in the pandemic, to our show. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. right? So it was really difficult and now to really market our products properly and require a lot of capital but yeah. that's why we changed the business model yeah. anyway yeah. Mm, but what is currently working well mm -hmm. is something that we didn't even launch by ourselves is tiktok oh, what i'm okay. saying is we don't have a tiktok mm. account but most of our current rental customers are coming through tiktok oh, and, okay. and that's because at the botanical gardens in Bogor and bali most of our customers are teenagers or students that are very active on tiktok and mm -hmm. they come there, mm -hmm. and our guide is taking videos of them. They upload it on TikTok. Their friends see it at school, or university, and mm -hmm. they also want to do the same. And and that's basically for us the best of what can happen. Right. Because it's free mm -hmm. marketing, mm -hmm. and every month we get more and more customers mm -hmm. because more and more people are putting their stories mm -hmm. into TikTok and recommending our rental service, right? So, uh, what kind of project that Scoot is uh, doing at the moment? All right, so as mentioned earlier, we're going to launch next month mm -hmm. our new business, our new company mm -hmm. called Scooty, mm -hmm. which will be the world's first public transportation company equipping road racing mm -hmm. scooters with GPS to rent them out through an application through fixed mobility stations. Okay. Now, below this new company, we have a couple of side projects that mm -hmm. are partly already running and partly mm -hmm. will be founded in the near future. Mm -hmm. The first project that I mentioned earlier, it's a racing team. Yeah. That's kind of the focus at the moment because we have about two weeks of qualification mm -hmm. event in Europe coming up, in Spain mm -hmm. or Italy. Mm -hmm. And that's Indonesia's and our own chance to qualify for the World Championship, mm -hmm. which will start in May. May. So that's very exciting and challenging at the moment. And the second project is uh, Walkers on Wheels. 
That's a charity organization mm -hmm. which is registered in Bali since one year as Yayasan Sahabat Scooter Electris. Yeah. So Walkers on Wheels will or is already providing e-scooters for free. Mm -hmm. for teenagers and parents are living far away from the school or from their mm -hmm. working places mm -hmm. without having access to any other motorized vehicles like yeah. school buses, motorbikes and yeah. so on. So they are using our e-scooters also with free helmets mm -hmm. and free maintenance. Mm -hmm. To get to school, so I don't have to, for example, yeah, so I don't have to walk anymore, maybe 30 minutes in one direction or 30 minutes back. And this helps us a little bit also with education in areas where big companies are usually not providing much education. Mm -hmm. right? Most companies are always focusing on where the crowd is, right. because the big cities, right. not the villages. Mm -hmm. So here we also want to tap a little bit on the, on the grassroots mm -hmm. level and do something good. Mm -hmm. And then the third project is called Scooty Food. Mm -hmm. So Scooty Food is a bit similar, like. Grab food or, mm -hmm. or uh, go food, mm -hmm. but the main differences are that our delivery staff will only use our electric mm -hmm. motorized e-scooters, mm -hmm. and they don't have to buy them. So they can just wait at any of our mobility stations wherever Scooty Food is active. Mm -hmm. They pay like a quarterly fee for being allowed to mm -hmm. use our e-scooters, and mm -hmm. then they can take any e-scooter they want. So if the battery goes empty, they just mm -hmm. change the e-scooter oh, at any okay. rental station they want. So they can, for example, work uh, part-time or only for a couple of months mm -hmm. for us mm -hmm. and then they can stop it. Maybe their holidays, their, their uh, lecture free time, if their mm -hmm. students is over mm -hmm. and they go back to the campus uh, and they don't have to worry about maintenance, mm -hmm. and storage space, taxes, repairing, mm -hmm. blah, 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 as they would need to if they buy their own motorbike. There are also no monthly installments they have yeah. to pay, only mm -hmm. the rental fee as long mm -hmm. as they want. Mm -hmm. And the advantage here is that our Food delivery staff can get faster through a traffic jam mm -hmm. compared to motorbikes, mm -hmm. but also much more environmentally friendly because our road worthy e scooters they are four to five times lighter than mm -hmm. electric motorbike, mm -hmm. which means they are four to five, four hundred to five hundred percent more energy efficient. That's so right. we're not talking about like making it ten percent more efficient, twenty mm -hmm. percent more efficient, mm -hmm. but like boom, five times more efficient. Mm -hmm. Now imagine we just could place like maybe only mm -hmm. one thousand motorbikes, electric motorbikes, mm -hmm. with electric scooters. Mm -hmm. it would save a tremendous amount of CO2 yeah. and reduce the energy consumption. Mm -hmm. So even if all electricity that we're using for charging is coming from non-renewable energy mm -hmm. sources, mm -hmm. then it's still way better to use an e-scooter compared to a petrol motorbike mm -hmm. or an electric motorbike because it's so much lighter. The heaviest thing on the e-scooter is you as a rider, mm -hmm. not the machine itself. So that's in my opinion uh, revolutionary and, and I've been working on, on this project since mm -hmm. a long time but Scooty Food will be launched next year because we have to first okay. launch the core business, mm -hmm. you know, make, test the new e-scooter mm -hmm. design, test the new business model and so mm -hmm. on and then once we already have mobility stations, Jakarta yeah. and Bali in mm -hmm. place, then the next step would be to launch Scooty Food as a separate business and company but also under Scooty. Right. So to make this all happen, mm -hmm. we are actually currently looking for investors. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're looking now for angel investors in this and next months. Mm -hmm. So there we're looking for 300,000 US dollars. This will help us to finish the design of our e-scooter, mm -hmm. our patent and helmet box, mm -hmm. um, our application, a new website, and it will also include the production of the first 250 e-scooters for Bali. Mm -hmm. And then afterwards we will need 8 to 9 million US dollars mm -hmm. for the seed round in order to distribute 5,000 e-scooters within 18 months in Indonesia. The whole Indonesia, so yeah, I mean, all outside Bali. Yes, all, yeah. also outside Bali, mm -hmm. where, wherever we believe like they can be of benefit. Yeah. In many big cities, I yeah. would say, and maybe some bigger tourist areas, mm -hmm. like Labuan Bajo, for example, is also mm -hmm. a target. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, the the goal in the first three years actually to distribute twenty five thousand units, but mm -hmm. those units would also be outside Indonesia. So we also have a franchise concept which can also work outside of Indonesia so mm -hmm. other companies or business people could um, rent or use our brand, yeah. buy the e-scooters from us, mm -hmm. spare parts from mm -hmm. us and they can also use our application mm -hmm. and they can, they can run their own e-scooter rental business okay. or food delivery business in the future whatever mm -hmm. at their home country. It will also be possible so mm -hmm. uh, we can also generate revenue and, and growth through sales so it's mm -hmm. also part of our yeah. business plan. Yeah. But so far, like, uh, where does the revenue come from? Like, the highest? Is it from selling or renting or uh, It depends. Like, for example, this month we sold eight e-scooters at once to, mm -hmm. an, uh, to a tour operator in Tabanan. Mm -hmm. So, of course, if you have a business customer who buys five, eight, ten units or whatever at once, and 
for this month or this period of time, sale is the biggest revenue. Mm -hmm. But in terms of stable income, it's rental. Right. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. why we also want to focus more on rental as mm -hmm. of this year. Mm -hmm. The best example are the botanical, botanical gardens for mm -hmm. one's bike. Mm -hmm. They're all renting it. They're also mm -hmm. coming back and rent it again. It's also mm -hmm. a good sign, right? So yeah, rental. So, yeah. so uh, that is the ongoing project at the moment. Yeah. Or is it also for the future project? Or is there another? No, do you have another project for the future? Well, I think I will probably spend the next five years mm -hmm. with the project that I mm -hmm. just mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, another project is maybe part of the racing team. Mm -hmm. So we recently launched a new e-scooter racing series called e-scooter tournament Indonesia, one mm -hmm. short SD. Mm -hmm. So that will be Indonesia's first own e-scooter racing series and we're doing that together with Ikata Motor Indonesia. Mm -hmm. Um, the first racing event is supposed to happen around July in Subang, West Java, also with international racers. We mm -hmm. only have some racers from overseas mm -hmm. who want to join. But uh, it's still in the idea stage, right? So I don't know whether we will redo it in July. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you might still change the rules. Um, we are still debating about the requirements mm -hmm. and this kind of stuff, right? Yeah. Because the focus right now temporarily is bringing the races, our team, to Europe for the World Championship mm -hmm. qualification and raising money so we can actually launch Scooty as a new business. Okay. These are the two focus for probably the next couple mm -hmm. of months. Mm -hmm. And besides that, there are no relevant or, or big projects going okay. on here at the moment. Okay. <laughs> That's very interesting, like all the projects that is going on and what is going to... Oh, I heard you're going to launch something tomorrow? To what? Tomorrow? I'm going to where? You're going to launch something tomorrow, like a new product or something? Oh, well, it's, it's not a launching uh -huh. event. Uh, we, uh, we learned that it can be beneficial if you sell or provide services or products that are not your core business. Mm -hmm. So last year we started to also provide solar panel systems mm -hmm. and also solar panel charging stations mm -hmm. because we believe it's in line with our mission to reduce energy consumption and so yeah. on. Uh, we also start to sell electric Vespers mm -hmm. and electric bicycles mm -hmm. and the latest edition of our new products from our Ukrainian partners, Kasha, mm -hmm. are electric sport and super bikes. Okay. So tomorrow we're going to have a public testing event here from 3.30 mm -hmm. to 5.30 p.m. where potential customers can try electric sport bikes. Mm -hmm. If they want, they can also buy them. They are mm -hmm. stock here. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's very interesting. What an interesting interview and thank you so much, Mr. Jan Henry. So uh, that is our interview from Scooter's office here in Umalas, Bali. And see you on the next interview. Bye-bye. See you around guys. Bye-bye.